John and Michael are on their way to meet the current Marquis of Sligo in the hope of discovering more about the paternity of their illegitimate great-grandmother. This good lady was, was illegitimate. I wonder, doesn't seem to bother you or me. I was going to ask you exactly the same question. Do you think yeah. you're sensitive about that? I would, I would not really have expected him to be, not, not in the modern days, unless he's a bit of an old stick, I, I, you know. Well, I doubt that he, the only thing is that he's the sort of boss of the family, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, they obviously went a great, great length to keep it quiet at the time. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, it was common for male members of the aristocracy to keep mistresses. The wealthy marquises of Sligo, with their stately homes in Ireland and England, could have sired children on both sides of the Irish Channel. Many of these illegitimate children were provided for by being made wards of chancery, a legal arrangement where, to guard against embezzlement, money given by the father was held in trust by the Lord Chancellor himself to provide for the education and upbringing of the child. Ward in chancery became a convenient way of hiding illegitimate children. Westport House has been the home of the Brown family since the early 18th century. The original title held by the family was Earl of Altamont. But when the third Earl, John Dennis Brown, voted for the Act of Union with England in 1800, he was promoted and became the first Marquess of Sligo. He was succeeded by his son, Howe Peter Brown, in 1809. Nine further Marquesses have since followed and John and Michael want to know which one of them might be their great-great-grandfather. They have arranged to meet the 11th and current Marquess of Sligo, Jeremy Brown. John, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. And Michael, you're most welcome to Westport House. And I would like to introduce you to Anne Chambers, who is one of yeah, our please. leading writers in Ireland and, and historians, and has well. written many books on mm -hmm. many different subjects. Now, I don't know whether you recognise any of the people <laughs> in this <laughs> photograph, but there is the young Sinead nice. Cusack, there Indeed. is the young me, and there is the young guess who? Indeed. Well, not, that not, was as in, young, not as young as the others, actually. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was in 1971, when I think you were down here playing the Absolutely. playboy, the playboy, playboy of the, the Western, Western, world. Western world. Yes, indeed. We've all changed a little Fantastic. bit have, since then, in How fact. How amazing. Yeah. There you are. I'd completely forgotten that they yeah. came here. It was an old tradition. The first thing you do when you come back to Westport House uh -huh. is you go up the staircase and you shake hands with the angel of welcome. Uh, Enjoy yourselves now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So well, thank you very much. Hi. The angel of welcome awaits. Oh, yes, so indeed. Yes. There's the angel of welcome. Absolutely, and she has a hand so sort of welcoming in order to shake. Long time no see. The reason that we're here is a rather cheeky one, because our great-grandmother, Emma Stafford, was, we think, the illegitimate daughter between a Marquis of Sligo and question mark, question mark. So we want to know um, which Marquis of Sligo was our great great grandfather. Have you any idea when your great grandmother may have been born? Any well, rough date? Not really, it would be, be very vague. We so yes. know when a grandmother, more or less, even, though, even that, more or less, when our grandmother was born. I think she was 80 when she died. Yes. And I was nine. 80 back from mm. um, 1949 then. Yeah, so you're talking about the latter end of the 18th 19th century. Mm. And your great-grandmother would have been another generation uh, behind that again. So yeah. really we're looking at the second Marquis of Sligo then. How Peter Brown... This is this fellow here. And that's him there. Yeah. Mm. Now, how Peter Brown was certainly a larger-than-life character, uh, given the times he lived in and the lifestyle he embarked on yeah. from a very early age. <laughs> he's just quite amazing, really, you know. Mm. He joined up with Byron. They went to Cambridge together. Right. And mm. this is where, really, the great life of debauchery starts. But, <laughs> how yes, Peter had... 
lots of, of chances to have illegitimate mm. children mm -hmm. or children outside marriage. He had many amorous mm -hmm. uh, entanglements and was also blackmailed by Harriet Wilson, one of the most infamous or famous, I'm not quite sure, uh, courtesan during that time. Mm. And how Peter says in one of his letters that he had to very dearly buy his own letters back from Harriet Wilson. This is getting into what might appear to be quite a, po a possible area, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I think the fact that he was in this milieu, really, that this was quite acceptable for mm. the aristocrats at the time, mm. and indeed they took very good care of their offspring. Well, Emma was a ward of chancery, that oh. we do know. Oh, well, that makes a difference. Only children of both parentage and of means became wards of chancery. It wasn't for yes, penniless yes, children. Yes, exactly. yeah. So I have to say to you, while we may not be able to connect directly, I think how Peter is your best bet. If you're going to have yeah, a look, I think... It does sound like it, doesn't it? Yes. Well, it certainly sounds like there's possibility there. Certainly, mm, many yeah, possibilities, yeah, John, yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, before you set off, there's a very fine portrait of how Peter in the house. I wonder, would you like to see it? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, I'd yeah. love to. Okay, very much so. Here we are, larger than life and the largest portrait in the entire collection, wouldn't you know? It's How Peter, it's second great, Marcus of Sligo. It's a really nice painting too. Isn't it? And this is the time of his kind of um, free and easy lifestyle. Free and easy life. That yes, I it's a very nice way of putting it to that. Um, I just want to see if there's any sort of connection between... Your great-grandmother. Yes, Emma, the great-great-grandmother, <laughs> and him. I don't think there is particularly, but I'll tell you who that really is, and that's to the left, and I believe that's... His father. His father. Yes, the first mark was absolutely... Yeah, just to, to go back to this uh, Ward of Chancery business, because surely with the Ward of Chancery there must be a sheaf of papers somewhere. Well, one would imagine so, anything to do with the court. But with the Court of Chancery, funny mm. enough, the papers are very, very dubious. You know, a lot of people would be involved in the case who may not necessarily want their names be released. So I don't really know, John, would you have much chance of success there, you know? Indeed. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll leave you with that, a picture of hopefully your ancestor, How yeah. Peter, great, second great Marcus. It's not that far away, is yeah. it, really? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that. You're That's very terrific. Welcome. We'll squabble over this one, shall we? I'm going to get another coffee. Oh, I. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> By making Emma Stafford a ward of Chancery, whichever Marquis fathered John and Michael's great grandmother did a good job of covering their tracks. Ward of Chancery documents are notoriously hard to identify. Very often, the only names disclosed are those of the judge and the solicitor neither of which are known in Emma Stafford's case. And the name of the ward themselves is almost never disclosed. Perfect for an aristocrat wishing to avoid any embarrassing claims decades or even centuries later. It would be most thrilling if we could find any proof of that, how Peter Brown is my great-great-grandfather. The difficulty is that being a ward of chancery is that it's, it's wrapped with secrecy for the that's, that's the whole purpose of it, in a sense, is that nobody should know, nobody should be given away names that they didn't want to give away. So um, that does not help our cause at all. All that John knows about Emma is that she was married to a Walter Lord Brown, who by uncanny coincidence bears the same surname as How Peter Brown. <laughs>